We continue today with chapter 29, The Changeless Dwelling Place. There is a place in you where this whole world has been forgotten, where no memory of sin and of illusion lingers still. There is a place in you which time has left and echoes of eternity are heard. There is a resting place so still, no sound except a hymn to heaven rises up to gladden God, the Father and the Son. Where both abide are they remembered, both. And where they are is heaven and is peace. Think not that you can change their dwelling place, for your identity abides in them, and where they are, forever must you be. The changelessness of heaven is in you, so deep within that nothing in this world but passes by, unnoticed and unseen. The still infinity of endless peace surrounds you gently in its soft embrace, so strong and quiet, tranquil, in the might of its creator, nothing can intrude upon the sacred Son of God within. Here is the role of the Holy Spirit gives you who wait upon the Son of God and would behold him, wake him, and be glad. He is part of you and you of him because he is his Father's Son and not for any purpose you may see in him. Nothing is asked of you but to accept the changeless and eternal that abide in him, for your identity is there. The peace in you can but be found in him, and every thought of love you offer him but brings you nearer to your awakening, to peace eternal, and to endless joy. This sacred Son of God is like yourself, the mirror of his Father's love for you, the soft reminder of his Father's love by which he was created, and which still abides in him as it abides in you. Be very still and hear God's voice in him, and let it tell you what his function is. He was created that you might be whole, for only the complete can be part of God's completion which created you. There is no gift the Father asks of you but that you see it in all creation, but the shining glory of his gift to you. Behold his Son, his perfect gift, in whom his Father shines forever, and to whom is all creation given as his own. Because he has it, is it given you. And where it lies in him, behold your peace. The quiet that surrounds you dwells in him, and from this quiet come the happy dreams in which your hands are joined in innocence. These are not hands that grasp in dreams of pain. They hold no sword, for they have left their hold on every vain illusion of the world. And being empty, they receive. Instead, a brother's hand in which completion lies. If you but knew the glorious goal that lies beyond forgiveness, you would not keep hold on any thought, however light the touch of evil on it may appear to be. For you would understand how great the cost of holding anything God did not give in minds that can direct the hand to bless and lead God's Son unto his Father's house. Would you not want to be a friend to him, created by his Father as his home? If God esteems him worthy of himself, would you attack him with the hands of hate? Who would lay bloody hands on heaven itself and hope to find its peace? Your brother thinks he holds the hand of death. Believe him not, but learn, instead, how blessed are you who can release him just by offering him yours. A dream is given you in which he is your savior, not your enemy, in hate. A dream is given you in which you have forgiven him for all his dreams of death. A dream of hope you share with him 
instead of dreaming evil separate dreams of hate. Why does it seem so hard to share this dream? Because unless the Holy Spirit gives the dream its function, it was made for hate and will continue in death services. Each form it takes in some way calls for death, and those who serve the Lord of death have come to worship him in a separate separated world, each with his tiny spear and rusted sword, to keep his ancient promises to die. Such is the core of fear in every dream that has been kept apart from use by him who sees a different function for the dream. When dreams are shared, they lose the function of attack and separation, even though it was for this that every dream was made. Yet nothing in the world of dreams remains without the hope of change and betterment, for here is not where changelessness is found. Let us be glad indeed that this is so, and seek not the eternal in this world. For giving dreams are means to step aside from dreaming of a world outside yourself, and leading finally beyond all dreams unto the peace of everlasting life. And from the workbook, Lesson 229, Love which created me is what I am. I seek my own identity and find it in these words, Love which created me is what I am. Now need I seek no more, Love has prevailed, so still it waited for my coming home, that I will turn away no longer from the holy face of Christ, and what I look upon attests the truth of the identity I sought to lose, but which my Father has kept safe for me. Father, my thanks to you for what I am, for keeping my identity untouched and sinless in the midst of all the thoughts of sin my foolish mind made up, and thanks to you for saving me from them. Amen.